So this is where my sister and brother-in-law have a business uh, that they manufacture out of called Four Legs. It's an all-natural dog treat business that they've been developing for many years. And it's really been taken off and they've, they've got this place to manufacture everything. And so we're here to take a look at it today and talk to them about uh, everything about their business. Kind of, it's really interesting. Okay, here we are. This is my sister Cynthia, obviously uh, Lydia, but uh, my brother-in-law John, Cyn Cynthia's husband. And Cynthia and John have started this company called Four Legs. How many years ago? Ten years. Well, uh, we've been here in this building for six years. Yeah, six we started years. started back in 2008. 2008. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like 13 years. Yes. Back manufacturing in your garage. And uh, so it's really taken some time and just a continuing story. So we're going to talk more about that today. But they're going to give us a tour of their shop. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger, more work, more work, which is great. And uh, I'm going to swing over here real quick before you give us a tour of the factory and just get show some of your dog treat brands. Organic Pumpkin. And they br use all human grade products, so you could actually eat them if you want to. Um, dog nuts, it's kind of <laughs> kind of funny titles. Kitty Roca, we know what that's about, right? Ode to Odie. Now Odie was Cynthia's, Cynthia's first deaf dog. Yeah, dog. Hearing dog. Service a service dog. Cynthia is hard of hearing, legally deaf, and so she had a dog that helped her when she was young and into adulthood um, be able to recognize when the phone rang, the doorbell rang, things like that. And that's part of her story too about why they're interested in dogs and, and, and their deaf dogs that you have now. So we'll talk more about that too. All right, so this is the entrance to the manufacturing facility itself. Wow, this is pretty big. And uh, it's human grade. Um, so we, from the get-go, we wanted our treats to not be classified as feed, but to basically keep to a higher standard. So this is a full human grade kitchen. Uh, we are inspected by the Washington State Department of Agriculture with all the dog food and dog food manufactured have to be inspected. Right? Got it. So usually on a yearly basis. Yearly? Mm-hmm. So this is actually our cookie cane machine. And uh, as you can see, we've got roller on these. And this is how the diet goes down into the cookie machine, and then I have the wire cut. So the dough gets goes down in there? Yeah, the dough reaches down here, and it turns. And that's what forces the dough to go. Now we have this. Oh. We'll go on top. It's heavy. And that, this is where we put the dough in. Oh, I see. put so much in it, because we'll make it in that bath. Uh, you make it in a big the mixer? Correct. And I will put all the dough in here with the perfect amount for the cooking routine. So a big reason, there's two reasons we use this machine. One is um, this is what's called a wire cut machine. So this piece here, um, I'll go ahead and turn it on. Yeah, you can okay. it. We'll pull that die there. You gotta close oh, that. Oh, sorry. Got some safety covers here. This is after safety. Close so we don't lose any fingers. There you go. Oh. I kind of like tin. Yeah. And so now. Oh. So you've got a wire there. Exactly. You've got a wire in there that. Mm -hmm. That cuts cut it, the and wow. then the uh, the corrugated rollers, of course, force the dough oh down. Gosh, and here's so, so two reasons we uh, we have a wire cut machine like this. Number one is our dough is really heavy and sticky, mm -hmm. and so it won't work in other types of machines like a depositor or an extruder. Those machines require a lot more flour as opposed to the gooey, yummy stuff that makes our treats so popular. Okay. The other reason 
is we would be really bored if we were making just one shape cookie. Oh. <laughs> and so that's what these dies do for us. It allows us to create um, any shape uh, that we want. Wow. And it's pretty cool because our customers like it. Uh, we like it. And um, we also happen to make uh, treats for a couple of other manufacturers. And they've actually developed their own shape. And so that's the nice thing about this machine is it, it has that flexibility. Yeah, because we can separate it ourselves right. from the manufacturing. Right. Good. Exactly. The only downside with this machine is it is slower. And we do have to do some sorting because it doesn't fall perfect every time. Like the extruder or the depositor. Right. So. We're not able to do the volume of treats mm -hmm. that the other manufacturers do. But we like to think we make a much higher quality treat. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. We're going to turn on the rack oven and we'll show you how to use it. It's the walk-in oven. You can see it. This is going to come down. Just moves it through the heat. Right. Wow. So it out. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So now if I want to stop it, you can just leave it open a little bit to let the air in so it's not rusting up towards it. And then now it's going to blow down. Oh, I forgot about Yeah, we normally. There's no dough in there, the paper will flop. Right, yeah, with the dough <laughs> on it, the paper doesn't fly right. This, this way it's just. <laughs> Do I have to get that? Yeah, leave it in there. So, yeah. Wow, that is all of them? Yeah, mm -hmm. so we got two of them. You can make a lot of cookies in that kind of yeah. oven. So we need to get two more. You need two more big ovens now. So our plans are to double our production. Right now we're doing uh, an eight-hour shift plus a six-hour shift. So we're, we're basically Every day? baking 12 hours a day. Wow. Uh, and then there's an hour and a half, two hours of cleanup at the end of every day. Um, and our plans are to acquire another mixer, another cooking machine, and another pair of ovens. Wow. And so we'll expand down this direction um, with those additional lines. How much is this one oven to buy? How new, much these go so for? A brand new one is about thirty-five thousand dollars up to forty-five thousand. Thirty-five to forty thousand. Yeah. You can find a huge one for around twelve thousand oh, and up. Right. So these ovens are actually made locally, um, right here in Oregon, Washington. So oh, nice. So manufacture the ovens like forty miles away. Yeah. Okay, great. You yeah. cannot get straight from a manufacturer cheaper. They they sell. <laughs> they sell. They sell what they sell for. Yeah. 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 So. We're renting from the Port of Centralia, and when we first talked to Kyle, the port manager, we were actually he was showing us that building across the way there, mm -hmm. which um, did not have a loading dock. And oh. We had mentioned to him that we really need. A building with a loading dock and what he called us back a week later and he says you know I have a tenant in this building that has fallen behind on their rent um, they don't need the loading dock and he says if you're willing to you know sign a contract for this building I'll move the tenant out of this building into that building wow. it, uh, we really yeah. like the Port of Centralia they're very very business friendly Kyle has made the mention that if you find yourself outgrowing the building, uh, come talk to us. We'll develop another building for you. That's they have terrific. Lots of space. Yeah. Very so, nice. Yeah. So this is where you put all your product to yes. get shipped out. Mm -hmm. These are the ten-pound boxes of bulk. Oh, wow. Ten-pound boxes. 
Yes. Yeah. So these are all of our products. So then we'll do a private labeling for other companies too. And you'll see they're labeled on their own mm -hmm. So you're making your own product and you're under your own labels. You're also sending it out in bulk mm -hmm. to some of your stores that sell it in bulk. Mm -hmm. And you're also producing it for other other companies' products, you're producing it for them mm -hmm. and sending it out. Okay, look at all that. Look at all this product. This is about a week. This is a week's worth of yeah, product. This is a week of product. Wow. My goodness. Now, there's a dog gonna go out there for it. So. And the times where you were cooking it in your garage years and years ago <laughs> are way past, right? right. Yeah, there yeah. was. We actually we were, were looking laughing at laughing because we used to only make two bands of tweet a day. Now we're doing like 12 to 14 and 15 to 16. Depending on wow. Their, depending on the volume. Yeah, we were looking at a picture on Facebook. Cynthia brought it up and it was, what, six years ago? Yeah. And yeah. we had we had one pallet that was going outside out. our garage and we were just going, whoa. Pretty we're just, exciting. We're pretty yeah. big time. <laughs> yeah. Like one piece. One pallet. Yeah. yeah. This is 10 pounds. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. A pallet is these big wooden things on the bottom pallet. that they so stack it on. That's a pallet. So oh. they said that years ago when they got one pallet, they were pretty happy they had that much product going out. But look at how many they've got now. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Yeah. Talking about the band of tweet, and this is what we do. We actually dump them in here to pull them off, and then it'll be packed. This is the blueberry pancake. Blueberry pancake treats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can I eat one? Is yeah, it, if you wanted is to. Is it eatable? You want to take it? Yeah. You can eat it. Oh, crunchy. Oh. Yeah. Don't break it. Okay. Now, Lydia said she was hungry on the drive. <laughs> there you go. So I guess she's pretty darn hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is very clean. Yeah. I know. Yeah. There's no yeah. salt or sugar yeah. in it. Do you taste so. the blueberry? Mm-hmm. It's good. And molasses. Oh. <laughs> molasses and blueberries. Okay, yes. sounds good. So one reason in particular that our bulk treats are so popular uh, is that our treats actually smell good. And if you think about it, if you tear open a, a box of milk bone, um, you don't really think of a, a dog biscuit having any kind of flavor or smell whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And the retailers in the bulk section will typically have open... Uh, containers, pails, that type mm -hmm. of thing. It depends on the dealer uh, of dog treats. And when people walk by, they are smelling our treats. And And uh, it's a big reason we're so popular. Again, this is a big reason we use the wire cut method as opposed to the higher volume methods. Our treats actually smell better as a result. And absolutely taste good. They too. taste good too. I mean, looking at you down too. Now, I know you used to have one that's called Shahalis Mint. Do yes, you still we have still that? Do. Oh, okay. We still have that one too. Yeah, yep. we still do. Very popular. We have these little samples and we like to have them in a coffee shop and in a bag to be able to give it out to our customers. And we decided that we would partner with the Centralia nice. School District and the co-op of Centralia so that they have special need kids that give them something to do to be able to put something on your resume or some job experience. And they would come here and bring um, back our products that's already made. And then we'll give them more product, the cards and the envelope, and then that way they can go back and start filling them up. And so it gives them a chance to get out of the um, classroom and be able to come here and see what we do. And here. be part of something. Yeah. Yes, and so do something. Be part of our community. That's great. And so this is giving back for the stuff that needs to do that. The and, stuff that we and these are samples that you guys give out uh, you take to like banks and things like that where they can hand it out to people that have dogs or yeah. stores where they have walk-in dogs, things like that. Okay. Exactly. Wow, it's pretty yeah. good.
Now, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of flowers. We have the white flower, we got the old flower, and then we're able to put them up there because we have to buy so many quantities. Oh my gosh. And so we have to use our forklift to get it down. But we buy it by 2,000 pound tote instead of having 50 pound bags like these because there's so much waste and we're saving money by buying it in tote. So whenever you think you're having to get too big of a a package at Costco or something, you can remember this. This is yeah. this is the big daddy package. Yeah. And, then, and then you'll see the molasses and the canola oil. We also buy them in tote to say it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, so that's molasses. That quite a way down. Right. So molasses. Get more. And then uh, canola oil. And all of our ingredients, by the way, are non GMO. So we, and we they verify and they audit with us on an annual basis as well. But the big reason that we, we've gone to this is, is obviously we're, we're saving on packaging. We're not throwing away a bunch of one-gallon bottles uh, into the landfill, but it's also saving us money. So, again, to give you an idea, we buy everything by the pound. That's how we get charged, even liquids. And so the canola oil, which is pretty expensive, we were paying $1.85 a pound for the cold pressed non-GMO canola oil. We in the 400 gallon totes were paying 85 cents. It's wow. now up to a dollar 18 because the oh. cost of um, everything going up, everything. Is so that's gone good. up too, but it's quite a bit of a difference between the individual packages. Yeah, yeah then yeah. buying nice. it in yeah. one gallon so. jugs, which is how we started. Nice. Yeah, yeah about 12,000 for this use. Wow. New these new these machines sell for north of thirty thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. 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 Thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. And this okay. Yeah. And uh, you have this one and this two machine. Yeah. yeah? Right. This is that cookie machine. Cookie machine. Uh, so they mix it five, here yeah. and then they load the dough into yeah. this. Yeah, and this this new I mean we we bought we purchased this new and it was it was a little shy of twenty thousand dollars. Uh, for this machine. So this, this equipment is, it's really expensive, but it's also designed to work all day. Oh. Okay. It, I mean, it's just, it's just that great of equipment. You know, it's not something that, mm -hmm. you know, you fire up the mixer on the kitchen counter and you're mm -hmm. cooking tonight's dinner and then it gets put away. These guys are running 12 hours a day, five days a week. Um, and they're capable of running more than that. Wow. Yeah. That's so. Good. So we started Four Legs. The idea of Four Legs, all natural dog treats, started in 2004. And we were dating at this time. And we wanted to achieve, to do something that we could do together as a small business. And so we decided to do, actually we had several different ideas, mm -hmm. but we decided to settle on dog treats because of Odie, my service dog. He was allergic to just about everything. And so um, we wanted to make something that was good for dogs without all the filler, the preservative, all the junk, the, all the feed grades. We just didn't want any of that in there. Mm -hmm. And so we decided we were going to uh, achieve world domination in dog treats. In dog treats. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, we kind of started from the premise of... Um, as opposed to avoiding bad things in our treat for your dogs, we decided to just kind of reset the whole idea and let's just put ingredients in our treats that are good for your dogs. That's it. And if made of ingredients, you can put out. <laughs> actual actual words that you know. Exactly. Right? Yes. Exactly. Many of our customers like that idea of making product with Pronouncing real ingredients, ingredients not scientifically produced chemicals exactly. things like that exactly mm -hmm. so right now you're producing a lot of product where's it going it is going through the distribution channel it's going to tui.com it's going to amazon.com it's going through um direct stores like my baby pet store they have their own they have the whole washington oregon 
all along the coast they have also on the west coast stores. a lot of mud bay pet stores yes yeah, and they sell a product they don't buy the bag but they buy it in bulk so that people can scoop out different products for right. the same price now i've walked through mud bay stores and i've seen the open barrels you know where you can open the lid and you could smell the product mm. yeah. and and the people told me that they were good sellers for them yeah they are there. So, um, the, are there so besides the online stores, are can people go to other pet stores and just buy the bags, or is yeah. the bags really just online? No, the bags are in the store too. The independent pet stores. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, terrific. Mm -hmm. But if not, they can they can find the products online. Uh, four legs with a Z. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Now the other thing is you have some interesting names to your dog treats. Where do those come from? That's good because the first one that we came up with was called Kitty Roca. And the terminology for Kitty Roca was, you know how dogs like to dig into the cat litter and eat kitty poop. Well that's where the terminology for Kitty Roca came from. And we decided to make a better alternative rather than uh, cat going and eating cat, cat poop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was our first thought. That was actually our first original mm -hmm. cat on uh, dog treat. Yeah, it's important to be able to give your dog a big smooch with no reservations. There you go. <laughs> so dogs dig it. Dogs dig it. Dogs okay, dig there it. you go. So Cindy, you also wrote a book kind of about your own life and, and things like that. As a brother, if you read something in Cindy's book about her brother, you don't have to believe it. But, you know, people see things different. But maybe she said good stuff. I don't remember. But I read the book, and it was really interesting for me to see how you saw things through your eyes um, growing up, being hard of hearing and things like that. And, uh, you know, it really did choke me up just because to rethink through some of those types of things. But um, why don't you tell us about why you wrote the book and uh, what you would like people to know about it. The, the First of all, show it. Work, as you can see, it talked about the for the left of dogs, a deaf woman journey. Uh, I thought it was really important to pe for people to know why I started this business. Uh, they always say, well, there's always a story behind the reason for starting a business. So this, I decided to write the book. It took five years to write it. Wow. And so um, it, it talked about how I grew up and how I fell in love with the dogs. And I, and when I got my service dog, Odie, and because of his allergies with food and truth, and he was even allergic to cats and fleas, I mean, he was allergic to everything. And it was important for people to know what to do with their dogs, you know, how to take care of them, how they become family with us. Um, and so that's why I came up with the title for the love of dog. Now, after Odie passed away, I, I had the option to get another service dog. But I decided because I love dogs so much, I'd rather have more than one. Because when you have a service dog, you can only have one. Mm. And there was no other. And um, I had to move on in my life that I felt more secure. Mm -hmm. And that's when Gordy <coughs> came into my life. And um, she was a yellow lab mix retriever. And, but she was a quiet one. She didn't make noise. And she wasn't alerting me to anything until about a year and a half. That's when I met John mm -hmm. when I first got right. old Goldie. And she, I rescued, I adopted her when she was six months old from another person. Okay, so she and, was a rescue dog. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so we decided um, it was best to get another playmate for Goldie because she was digging out. She, going over the fence to be with other dogs. And so that's where Adam came along and we got her the puppy. And the next day after bringing her home, and Auntie Susie and her two boys came over and she barked. 
But it was the first time anybody alerted me, like Odie used to do, to let me know that somebody was at the door. And she was just a little tiny puppy letting me know that somebody was at the door and going, oh my goodness, somebody's letting me know. And so um, we knew that she would do well because she was always constantly letting me know when something's going on. And she actually became an interpreter for Goldie because Goldie tolerated pain. And she doesn't tell me if she's in pain or sick or whatever. I would not let me know if Goldie needed me or not. So that mm-hmm. was an interesting story. In wow. That wow. Too. Yes. Too. Yes. And we love to go hiking and mm-hmm. boating. Yep. And two years later, John and I decided to get married. And so I moved in with him. Mm-hmm. With the dog, and he had two cats at that time. They were not sure about us, but we actually blended our families and became the Murray Bunch. The Murray so, Bunch, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> so that was a fun story. But we enjoyed having a dog and a cat. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. So eventually you adopted a deaf dog. Yeah, and that's where. We were so bored. We were making treats at home during the summer. And, and um, the story of those just popped up on Facebook and it kept popping up on my feed and everything. And I thought, oh man, this dog is so cute. So I slightly hinted to John, hey, what do you think about getting another dog? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah. And so I decided to apply for it. And this was around the 4th of July. And, um, Nobody was um, interested in those, and it's really hard to uh, um, find home for that dog mm-hmm. because it does take a little more training because they can't hear anything. And so um, I do sign with both of my girls, and so when we decided to adopt those, um, we flew him here from Virginia. And he, he arrived in August, and he, he knew nothing, because he was just a stray. I don't know what happened to him. They had to cut off his tail because they were so mutilated that um, he has no tail now. And so he was just a happy dog when he first came to us. Um, no. I don't know how old he was. And... Um, at first, it was hard for him to know what I was signing and was telling him what to do, how to use the doggy door, and we actually have it on YouTube. And it was just a cute little video of him figuring out. Learning how to, how to use the doggy yeah. door. Oh, now, no. Dozer that you're talking about right now is yes. in the picture yes. right yes. behind yes. you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah he's yeah. a beautiful dog. Yeah. Oh, cute. Yeah. That's Dozer being happy. Yeah. And now we have Chip, who is also deaf, and he's a chocolate lab. And we rescued him too from another family. So he's the; those are the two dogs you have. And we currently have, yeah. yeah. With mm-hmm. the others that have passed away, mm-hmm. you've got uh, Dozer and Chip, and they're both deaf. deaf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. And I saw somewhere where you said they're both deaf like me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I actually read this book, and you know, I was crying like crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I have one page I reread and read and read and I thought, wow, you're a achiever because, you know, you have some limitation and you uh, succeed and doing lots of good stuff and for community, for charity, 100% because, you know, it's... I think, I think one thing that impresses me the most about Cynthia is, yes, she's deaf, um, and some people would say that she has a disability, and I think Cynthia's, Cynthia would correct someone that would say that and go, I'm not disabled, I'm differently abled, mm-hmm. and I think that's really important. Well, it, it, yes, we do have a disability, but we can overcome a lot of things right. in our lives, and so that's, that's what we really have to emphasize on. Yeah, we all have the, we all have talent, we all have skills, and there's something that we can and can't do. 
And it's the best part of who we are. <laughs> Terrific. Well, thank you so much for sharing the story with us today. Uh, thank you.